Hi everyone, my name is Pieta Valentine and I've written two books, The Resident's Voice from a Dementia Unit and The Resident's Rise from a Dementia Unit. So with this series we are presenting positive practical techniques that you can use to help people in dementia units. So today's session is on technology. Technology from uh, the perspective of the resident's perspective, not technology that the medical staff use, which of course is very up and running in most places, but the technology, technology available to residents is what this video is about. Okay, so firstly, what is not available? So to most residents, well, all residents, you could say 98% of residents, cell phones, um, iPhones, iPads, computers are not available to people in dementia facilities. Some people do come in with a cell phone, barely able to use it, but it's really when, you know, the charge goes or something else goes amiss or their subscriptions, you know, gets mucked up or they haven't got enough money on their phone or whatever it is. It's, um, it seems to be that uh, most people that have the odd couple of people that I've seen with a dement with a cell phone in a dementia unit generally only last about two three months with it otherwise all sorts of problems happen and often it's you know ringing the same person you know 80 times a day or whatever it is and that of course doesn't work out for anyone so that's really not available to people in dementia units that technology the occasional person has a telephone in their room, of course, extra charge. Um, but then, of course, the person needs to understand, um, look at the sheet above the phone, get the person's name, get the person's number, coordinate all of that. And that can actually be quite a mission. So uh, telephones are fantastic if the person can actually use them. But often it's out of the range, um, the ability range of, definitely the majority of residents. Now in terms of the phone, it's a very awkward thing. Everyone, well not everyone, but most residents want to speak to their partner or son, often son for elderly mothers, um, off regularly. And it's a real dilemma because generally in most units there's only one or two available phones and there's 30 residents, and often you'll get a big crowd of them at the nurse's station trying to make the call. Now, the nurse, the charge nurse, as we know, is so busy with medication rounds and dressings and relatives and other phone calls and doctor's rounds, and to try and then cram in a few phone calls for residents is really um, challenging for everybody. So often the uh, residents will end up spending hours at the front desk trying to get the charge nurse, trying to remember if they've got the right person to make the call, getting stressed out because they're not getting attention, etc, etc. Generally though, most uh, charge nurses will make an effort to make one, maybe two phone calls for a resident in the day if they're really stressed and need to speak to someone. So it's good if the relative can have their phone number or say power of attorney or the close friend or family uh, can have their phone number. Make sure it goes at the front of the resident's file, easily accessible for the nurse to find. If you're working, say the hours, if it's an emergency, the phone call for that, outside work, the hours you're available for phone calls, all of these things, just note in the front of the, have it noted in the front of the patient's file, and then it's easy access uh, for the charge nurse, who is usually the only person to make the call, because if there's multiple people who are making calls, then it gets very confusing, and often a relative can end up, you know, on the phone all day with however many calls from however many people that the residents try to get through with. Another good thing that some relatives do is they just say to the charge nurse, look, I'm available at six o'clock every night after dinner. Um, just 
put a phone call through to me then and I'll speak to mum. Fantastic. You're available. The charge nurse knows that you're available. The, the charge nurse can say to the resident who's, you know, pleading to call, look, a call's going in at six o'clock. You, you can speak to your daughter then, which will generally appease them so that others can then, you know, take the cue. I mean, take the next step in the queue for the phone call. Zoom calls work in part, take a bit of time to set up and you really need to have someone else there to be with the person, foreign technology, um, you know, speaking to your son over a screen is very difficult to, very different to speaking to them in person for most elderly people. So you really need to have another family member or a paid carer to be with your mother or father for Zoom calls if you're making them from overseas. But they're very handy because you can get to see your mother, you can get to see whether she needs a hair, hair set or if she's put on weight or lost weight or you can ask the carer or the nurse at the time what your mother needs so that, you know, she may need to go out for a walk. Can you organise for someone in the family to do that? A lot can be sorted out actually through a Zoom call. But the positive thing about technology, the greatest blessing in the unit in terms of technology is the smart TV, that very smart TV is really, I mean, I've mentioned it a lot in, in both books actually, um, how fantastic that smart TV is because programs, you know, it's entertaining, it's filled with history and news and knowledge and, and you know, of course you can gear it uh, according to the interests of the residents rather than just having to sit in front of a TV and take whatever's coming. The residents can have programs set up for them that they enjoy, old musicals, you know, 1950s um, interviews, uh, uh, David Attenborough of course is the favourite, the Crown and the Queen, the favourite. So I just want to talk a little bit about how to make the setup um, work, best work for residents. Okay, now you don't just sit the people in front of the TV and turn it on and that's it. No, no. You actually have to put a bit of effort into this. Firstly, get the group set up so that those that are most interested get the front seat, that all the wanderers and other people are away from the screen, you know, happily diverted somewhere else, that um, the light is good so people can see the screen, that they've got their glasses on and that they're cleaned, hearing aids if they need them. Just make, you know, that they've had their morning and afternoon tea, that that's all taken away and everyone's sitting there ready to have a good time. Now, as the facilitator for the group and the programme, you need to stand, if activities coordinator, diversional therapist, trainer, teacher, whoever, stand up near the screen and be there to MC the programme, so to speak. So say, for example, the crown gets put on. So you put the programme on, or you explain to the residents before you play it what it's about. Of course, what where you're up to. So say it's Queen Elizabeth's coronation. Of course, they love Prince Philip. They love the Queen. Okay, so you say what year it is. Was it 1957 or something like that? 55. And um, so that they're all geared for the coronation. Yes, the Queen is coming on. The coronation is coming on. How fabulous is that? And then put the subtitles on and ask the residents to look at the subtitles and read them so they can keep up. Because otherwise, of course, memory loss, they won't, well, they'll, they'll recognise the Queen, chances are, if she's got the crown on. But read the subtitles because it enables them to keep up with the story, but also it's good for their reading skills for the, and for their concentration. So many um, aspects are, you know, such an advantage in terms of so many aspects, being able to read that those subtitles. Now, if ads come on, just maybe give them a little bit of an update or answer questions if need be. Make sure that if any, you know, if there's any uh, conflict in the group or if a wanderer is coming up and sort of standing transfixed in front of the television, which does happen, quietly move them on. 
uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just so that the environment and the atmosphere is calm, it's organized, there's no distractions, and that they can just sit and watch it, and you're there with them, and you're focusing on it with them, and you're answering questions as need be, and you're letting them enjoy it, etc. Then when the episode's over, then you can discuss it with them, and what did they like, what they didn't like, you know, what was interesting, and it's a whole activity or exercise in itself. And the same with David Attenborough. Any any of those David Attenborough beautiful animal programs or these other lovely animal programs, it doesn't matter whether it's fish, budgies, dogs, cats, the Amazon, the coral reef in Australia. It's all stunning. It's all wonderful. You know, it's all explained so well. And the, the commentators have beautiful voices and it's a, a really... <coughs> Her residents in a dementia unit can sit for hours watching that stuff and never get bored. Um, so it's a total win. So that's what I'd like to mention about technology, really the smart TV. Now, if, <clears throat> if the unit does not have a smart TV, videos or DVDs, yeah, are fine. But, you know, like Andre Rio used to be a massive favourite. And there was one Irish singer that they used to love. But it tends to get quite limiting in terms of variety. I mean, you know, golden oldies, yes, everyone loves that. But dementia, people in dementia units need a lot of variety, a lot of stimulation, a lot of input. You know, they're in, a, they're in an enclosed, flat environment where they're not getting engagement with the outside world. So to stimulate their thinking, they need to be stimulated with good quality information. So the better... The, the program, the activities, the input, the chance for them to become educated and updated on uh, whatever is relevant for them, this life or historically or, you know, nationally, internationally, it doesn't matter as long as there is that interest from the residents and as long as you are engaging them and facilitating that so that they can get the best learning from the experience. Now, of course, yeah, when relatives come in, um, you know, they may well have iPhone or iPad to show the resident photos of the family and beach outings and holidays and things like that, which are always wonderful. But the main thing really for relatives is to engage with the uh, resident in these activities, you know, um, and then that way they can be part of the community and learn and think and, and grow and develop and enjoy uh, where they are as best as they can. Some enjoy it better than others, of course, as in anything in life. So that's uh, the basis really of technology in a dementia unit. This wonderful smart TVs are just the best thing out. One subscription, Netflix or whatever else, and you've got 30, pe 30 people, 30 people getting all that wonderful um, access to the outside which they don't get with any really as easily with any other experience unless they've got a very dedicated dedicated relative who takes them out every day and gives them a nice time in outings and walkings and going to various places which is quite demanding but this marvelous um, smart tv with netflix for good quality programs that are educational and get them thinking is superb so thank you, whoever developed that marvellous smart TV and started to put them in dementia units. Fantastic. Okay, so the end of this, for the two books, The Resident's Voice and The Resident's Rise, I'm going to put below the link to the, my author's website, pietervalentine.com, where you can buy the books, where you can see all these YouTube videos will be there, just easily accessible. You can read the first chapter of the book, all sorts of things. So you can go there and browse around, see what you're interested in. And please like below or subscribe if you're interested. Now, just to let you know that this series of videos I'm doing now in terms of positive practical techniques to help people in dementia units will have a limit. I'm about halfway through the epilogues, which has all the techniques in The Residence Rise. I've already done this book, the techniques in this book. Now I'm into the techniques in this book, halfway through the epilogues. 
and so there'll be a, a finite time I think I have about four or five more videos that I will be doing in this series but of course with the books you get you get the story the novel of those marvelous characters the everyday life of a dementia unit which I won't give any secrets away because it's actually quite interesting reading you know the residents in dementia units are marvelous especially this age group late 80s 90s what the nearly a century of life and so much we can learn from them minds of information you know gems of information you know gems real they are gems they are gems all of them so you can enjoy that reading not it's nice easy reading but still a lot of learning at the same time for everybody so thank you for watching that is the end of today's session